Can I write the, um, the product rule in the top right hand corner again? So product rule. Okay, product rule. Just remind me, if I take the derivative of the product of two functions, what do I get? Yeah. Yeah, plus. The other way around, yeah? The other way around. Um, if you like, you could kind of write it like this. So if I change the order, which you can kind of read as vv if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to read it that way, it could be uvu. So the product rule becomes the uvu rule, or the vv rule. Anyway, um, quotient rule, right? If you have the quotient of two functions, so let's suppose you have a function on the top and a function on the bottom. For example, you could have something like this. You could have something like that. Okay, that would be the quotient. Um, so two functions divided by each other. Okay. So we need to come up with a rule like this. But are you happy? You could really just use the product rule again here, because. I mean, if I treat this as u and v, just be aware this is a function of x and this is a function of x. Are you happy I could write this as u and v to the negative 1? Yeah, so take the second function and write it to the power of negative 1. Yeah, just by laws of indices. Okay. So, really, this is just the product rule again, but just thinking about it like this. Okay. So, if I want to find the derivative, I should just use the product rule. Product rule says, the, take the first function, leave it alone. Multiplied by the derivative of the second function. Now you've got to be careful here because you've got to use the chain rule. Okay? If you bring the uh, power down, it becomes negative. Leave the inside function alone. Reduce the power by 1, it becomes negative 2. But then you need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Remember, this is a function itself. V is a function. So I need to multiply by the derivative of V. Presumably, it's a function of x, which it is. Okay? And then add, so let me just write that so it's a product, yeah, not just a subtract. Add, add the other way around. Leave the first function alone, v to the negative 1, multiply it by the derivative of the second function. So du by dx. Does that make sense? Just literally the product rule applied to this thing. Bearing in mind u and v are not variables, they are functions. Hence why I have to multiply by the derivative of the function. And the derivative of the function. Okay, so let's just tidy this thing up a little bit. Um, all right, so I'm going to get a negative u v to the negative 2. Happy with that? Times by the derivative of v with respect to x. Plus, well, this would be 1 over v, wouldn't it? du by dx. In fact, I could change this to 1 over v squared, which I'm going to do. Happy with that? Happy with that? Okay. Now, just because I don't like writing the negative first when I've got a positive over here, I'm going to swap the order around. So I'm going to get 1 over v multiplied by the derivative of u minus, this is going to be u over v squared multiplied by the derivative of v. Okay. Now, just because it's getting confusing, I'm going to swap this du by dx for u dash and this dv by dx for v dash. Okay, just to show it's the product. Just to show it's the product. Okay? Now just bear in mind, so effectively what I have now, what I have now is u dash over v minus u v dash over v squared. Just bear in mind, I want to write this as one function. So this is the product rule. I want to write this though as one fraction. So I do that by getting a v squared on the denominator, which I could easily do just by multiplying by 3 by v over v. Does that make sense? So in other words, I have v times u dash, okay, minus u times v dash. Because both of these things are over v squared now, the whole thing will also be over v squared. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So in other words, the derivative of the quotient, so two things being divided by each other, should be equal to this. But you know me, I like to show you why things are true. Okay. So just bear in mind, before it didn't matter. So with the product rule, it didn't matter which way u and v were written, whether u was first or v was first. It doesn't matter. With this thing now, v is on the denominator. 
So u comes first on the numerator, v is on the denominator, this is the quotient rule. How does it get the word dv, dv over dx came? Why this came in? Yeah. Okay, so just think about it. If I differentiate this, so let's just think about uh, v to the power of negative 1 differentiated. So I want to differentiate this thing. Okay, it's just the chain rule. Okay, so v could be, for example, cos of 2x. It's a, it's a function. Sure. Okay, so if I bring the power down, it becomes negative. It becomes negative. Okay, negative. Leave the function alone and reduce the power by 1. Mm -hmm. Happy with that? Yeah. However, the chain rule tells me I also need to multiply by the derivative of the inside bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? And the derivative of the inside bit is just going to be dv by dx, or if you prefer, it becomes 1 and over uh, times by v dash. Okay? So we have the product rule. Let me just write the quotient rule then as well. Let me just write the quotient rule. If I have the derivative, sorry, d by dx, I'm getting tired now, of u divided by v, okay, that should be equal to this thing down here. Okay, it should be equal to v u dash minus u v dash all divided by v squared. So we can forget all of that now, ish. I always like to show you where things come from because a lot of the things in maths are connected. And actually showing where things come from gives you more power because if you're sitting there going, hmm, I'm not sure why this is true or I can't quite remember a formula, you can go back and think about it yourself. Okay? And it shows you that everything is kind of connected to each other. Um, it also shows you mathematical thinking. Yeah? Somebody came up with this by thinking about the product rule. In the same way, somebody else came up with the product, with the product rule. Yeah? So it all kind of follows on from each other. That's mathematical thinking for you. Let's see this one in action, though. I want to give you an example before you go away and have a look at question 5 for homework. Okay? So if I want to find dy by dx, okay? I need to use the quotient rule, you happy, because it's the, it's the quotient of two functions. It's two functions divided by each other. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to find u and v and the derivatives of each of those separately. So I'm going to say u is equal to my top function, x cubed plus 5x, which means that the derivative of u is going to be what? Perfect. Okay. I'm then going to say that v is my bottom function, my denominator, cos of 2x, okay, which means that the derivative of v is going to be perfect, okay, just the chain rule, right? And then I just put the relevant thing in the correct place in my quotient rule, okay? By the way, the quotient rule is given to you in the exam, so you don't have to remember it. The product rule isn't, though, so you do need to remember that, but I don't think it's that difficult, okay? So dy by dx is going to be equal to v times by the product of u, uh, sorry, the derivative of u. So v is going to be cos 2x. Okay, in fact, I'm going to create some space. Okay, it's going to be v multiplied by the derivative of u. v is cos 2x, cos 2x. The derivative of u is 3x squared plus 5. Okay, minus, minus u multiplied by the derivative of v. So it's going to be u, which is x cubed plus 5x, multiplied by the derivative of v, which we worked out was this, so it becomes negative 2 sine of 2x, sine of 2x, okay? All divided by v squared. There's my v, which is cos of 2x, okay? And I need to square that. I could either write it like this, like this. Does anybody know how else we could write it? We can also write it like this, so the squared goes there. The reason being is because some people tend to be lazy and tend to write cos 2x like that without the brackets. So then if I write a squared without any more brackets, well, is it the cos 2x being squared or is it just the 2x being squared? Does that make sense? Yeah? yeah? So the reason why we write the squared in the middle is to show it's the whole thing being squared. Okay? Then I just tidy. Okay? Then I just tidy. So I can see... An x cubed, no, because it's not there. Oh, there's a negative and a negative. That's the only real thing I can do. So it's going to be cos 2x, 3x squared plus 5. Negative, negative becomes a positive. That becomes x cubed 
plus 5x times by 2, so I'll write that at the front, and I get sine of 2x there, all divided by cos squared of 2x. All good? Yeah? So we've done chain rule today, product rule, and quotient rule. It's a lot. Are we tired? Yeah. Good. What a lot to you.